The Dallas International Film Festival is coming up in a few weeks. What will be the films and filmmakers to watch out for? Find out next on Prime. Hi, welcome back to Prime. I am here with Sarah Harris, the Senior Programmer of the Dallas Film Society. Now, if you watched the segment before, you'd have seen Renee Contreras and Lee Pappert. Now, Renee Contreras, she is lips, this one is legs. <laughs> so, welcome, <laughs> Renee. You. Not Renee. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I can't get her out of my head. No, you just She love just those stays lips. there. <laughs> I love those lips. But I love you, my love. <laughs> so, Sarah, welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And we, what I want to talk about is in two weeks, six days, and a few hours, yes. the Dallas International Film Festival, which you have programmed with artistic director James Faust. You've all the films that you've we've been got, searching. Yes, we've got about 120 or so, probably more than that, films. And uh, we're adding more even over the next two weeks. Uh, but we're representing 27 countries from around the world, and we have about, I don't know, like five world premieres, maybe about uh, 35 Texas premieres, so the films that are playing in Texas for the first time ever. And uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> and have you been sleeping? Not much, no. <laughs> but you look amazing <laughs> for it. Thanks. <laughs> it obviously it works. Yeah. So you, so tell me, you go around the country for a a year, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yes. Finding films. We scout. Um, we scout films for a year. We also take s film submissions in the summer. Is when we kind of start this process. So we started looking for films last July for this festival coming up in April. And uh, so we take film submissions from filmmakers all around the world. And then we also travel uh, to film festivals like the Toronto International Film Festival, Sundance Film Festival, uh, LA Film Festival, and other places like that, even some smaller ones like Austin Film Festival, which is a great uh, writer's film festival. And we kind of, we look for films that might be a great fit for our audience in Dallas and things that may, may or may not have an opportunity to show here. And what do you look for? I mean, I, the, it's a good fit, but is there anything? It's, I, it's pretty much, it's all kinds of different things. It's, it's a unique story. Um, it could be a story that has been told, but told in a completely different way, in a different point of view. Uh, we also look for a lot of new talent, new filmmakers that uh, are kind of emerging artists so to speak, and uh, will be probably the people that you see making these Hollywood type films in you know three to five years, a couple of names that you'll recognize in 10 years, but they're just getting their start and we try to bring them to Dallas and kind of showcase their early work so that you know they kind of get a taste of what's coming next. Yeah, the short filmmaker of today is the Spielberg of tomorrow. All filmmakers usually start out as short filmmakers and so we have our shorts programs which often you know, they, they're just kind of testing the waters and proving that they can, they can make films. And then we actually have filmmakers returning to the festival this year that have had shorts in our festival before, but now they're coming back with the feature. That's exciting. And they're, yeah, they're just, they're so thrilled because they love Dallas, they love our audience, they love the festival, and they're just, like, they're getting emails at all hours of, like, can't wait to see you, can't wait to, you know, get to catch up and, like, have my movie screen there and all this stuff. So they're, the filmmakers are really enthusiastic about it. Oh, well, as they should be. Yes. Because you do, I mean, as you and James, uh, what you do is incredible. And the whole team at the Dallas Film Society mm -hmm. is incredible. Yeah, and, we got a great team. And people, the hospitality that the filmmakers feel just goes above and beyond is what mm -hmm. I hear. Yes, that's one of the things we're known throughout the country is that the hospitality of our folks here uh, not just of our staff and of our huge pool of volunteers, you know, the thousand or so people that just help us with, you know, taking tickets at the theater. That, you know, the filmmakers are just incredibly blown away by how nice everyone is and how excited people are to see movies. Yeah, and so. talking of movies. Yeah. So we have uh, the locally made films and we have the international mm -hmm. films. Yes. And the spotlight this year is South Korea. Yes, we've got some South Korean films that um, have been kind of blockbusters, so to speak, in South Korea and now are getting their opportunity to shine here in Texas. Well, this, so. well, the, we have a clip of My Way, which yes. is uh, one of, I think it's, it's, one of the biggest Korean blockbusters, I think. Right, it's the director is kind of known as the Spielberg of South Korea. Right. So it's this uh, great war story that's kind of, well, 
I'll let the well, we got a trailer. Okay, right? yeah, so we let's can... take a look. Two men in a lifelong rivalry when the world was about to change. A victory is shrouded by corruption and pride. One man is taken prisoner and forced to fight for the nation that destroyed his dreams. Then, he was reunited with his fated enemy at the battlefront. Wow, that looks amazing. Yes, it's a pretty big production. It is a big production, and the director is, um, we're pretty sure, 99% he will, sure he's coming yeah, in. Yeah, he uh, should be here for a Q&A and introduction for that film, which is kind of incredible that we we're able to bring him in. That is, and I know that the South Korean press are really excited. Oh, they are very excited. <laughs> which is wonderful. Yes, yes. And, and so we have the South Korean spotlight, and then of course the films that are closer to home. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one in particular, America's Parking Lot. Yes, uh, we have a Texas competition actually that helps to promote Texas filmmaking. One of the films in that is called a documentary called America's Parking Lot, and it's kind of about these super fans of the Dallas Cowboys and uh, following them kind of during the transition of the stadiums going from Texas Stadium to Cowboy Stadium and and the not really the politics but the money that is you know how much more expensive it is now for them to be that hardcore fan considering how much the season tickets cost and uh, these guys I mean they're the true ta tailgaters they take this very, very seriously. They, they really do. Well, let's take a quick look at the, the clip from America's Parking Lot. If somebody had a projector of my brain, I think I probably think about the Cowboys more than I think about my kids and my wife. You know what? I really would like to have your panties to hang for my trailer. That was the price to come to the party. What a great country we live in. We just said, hey, we're the Gate 6 tailgaters. The Gate 6 tailgaters! We even have our own koozies. The best damn tailgaters in the world! My first marriage broke up over the Cowboys, but this one gets it. Plates, bowls, yeah. cups, yeah. utensils, napkins. Yeah. Yeah. It truly is a fan. But just about everybody at the tailgate. It means a lot. This stadium means a lot. If my husband said that he loved the Cowboys over me <laughs> and my son, I think I'd have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why he's but got that, another wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But that's what makes these documentaries so fascinating. Mm -hmm. is the it? characters in them are just, that we've got a lot of great documentaries that have these interesting characters, and they're real life. These are, these are true stories, and it's, it's just fascinating. And do, so what are a couple of other docs that you really like uh, look up? One that we're showing, um, which uh, previously played at like, the Telluride Film Festival, is called Diane Vreeland. The Eye Has to Travel, and Diane Vreeland was the editor of Vogue during the 60s and before that during the 40s of Harper's Bazaar, and she was a like, firecracker. Yes. Uh, but it's kind of archive footage and recordings of her talking to her, the author of her memoirs and just her kind of talking about her life with um, some great, great photos and other interviews of you know, models and people that uh, knew her, her best during her career. Yeah, I saw that film and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm so bland. Yeah. When I watched that, I want right? a red boudoir <laughs> and everything yes, red she was, and fabulous. She was, she was fabulous. Um, so that's a really exciting film and anyone who's interested in fashion will just totally love that film. We have a couple of other documentaries um, such as like The Imposter, which was a really big uh, hit at Sundance and just played South by Southwest as well. Uh, which is kind of a mystery story that I can't give too much away, but it basically starts off with a boy going missing in San Antonio, and then suddenly there's someone in Spain claiming to be this missing boy three years later, oh and it kind of unravels from there. Uh, lots of really 
kind of wild stories like that. That is, so there really is something for everybody. Yes. This yes. year. We've got, I mean, that's the thing. If you like comedies, we've got comedies. The genre films, we've got a whole midnight section of uh, not necessarily horror films, but some really kind of crazy stuff. Um, that Those are always fun, always have a great audience and a good time. We also have, you know, some really great narrative dramas uh, with some famous that you, like famous actors that you may know, may recognize. Um, we have short films like we mentioned before and uh, just it's kind of you you can find a little bit for yourself and, you, and the great part about a festival is that you can kind of challenge yourself to try something new and there's all kinds of ways to do that. So. And that's what I think and some people think that film festivals they're just for film buffs or film critics and they're really not. They yeah. are they are for you know for families, there's, there's something for the little kids, there's something for the ones that love right. the midnight zombie films. Yep, yep. I there's, mean, there is the, and the whole spectrum in between. And that's yeah. what's so, so wonderful about it. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that you, there's so many films out there in the world and, I'll, you know, there's stuff that doesn't get distributed. And so yeah. festivals are the way, they're an outlet for filmmakers really to get their films uh, in front of audiences and so these are things that you know you might be able to catch them on Netflix in a year you might be able to see it on HBO or PBS but the festival experience is really about interacting with those filmmakers who are here and you can go up to them afterwards and be like I loved this part of your movie why did you do this or that and they will engage with you and, and they you love can that get too. yeah and but that's what makes a festival different than just going to see a movie on a regular Saturday or watching something on your, you know, at home on Netflix. It does. This interaction and this community and this conversation that is built. And the filmmakers are the celebrities and we also have celebrities that come in. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the past. We've had few. people like Amber Heard and Dennis Quaid and Helen Hunt and Charlize Theron and Robert De Niro. I mean, we've had the like great super top talent come in and we've got some uh, exciting things that are, will be announced soon as well um, that I can't really mention right now. But there's, uh, there's all these great like different levels of talent. So you have the up and coming people and you've got the like professional stars and then you have, um, I guess I can mention the, the animator that we have. Glenn we have Keen. Glenn Keen mm -hmm. who's coming in. Uh, to take our Texas Avery animation honor and uh, he is famous for basically creating Ariel and the Little Mermaid oh, and that. Beast and Beauty and the Beast and oh. I was a huge fan of those Disney films growing up and so he's actually going to be here and, and that's so exciting and we'll be able to talk to you about you know about Aladdin to do it. it's amazing so. well Sarah thank you so much I thank really you. really truly appreciate it and if anybody wants to go to the Dallas International Film Festival visit www.dallasfilm.org and for tickets 972-707-0838 thank you for joining us Sarah thank you and we'll see you next time